Hi everyone and welcome to the Chef's Table series. My name is Carol O'Connor, co-host of this instructional and engaging cooking show. So today we are continuing our trip in Roslindale. We are at the Sons of Italy Hall this week and we are filming Shanti, A Taste of India, Roslindale's first Indian restaurant. Chef Joe, along with Chef Andy of Shanti, will be cooking together two dishes that are in front of me. Vegetable samosas, as well as chicken kadai with basmati rice. And later on we'll have a wine pairing and other great segments, especially mine, with the co-owner of Shanti. So let's go over to Chef Andy and Joe to prepare this delicious meal. Hi, I'm Chef Joe Murphy, co-host of the Chef's Table series. This show is produced through the Chef's Table Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to producing this show, but also helping people that are in need. And our objective is to help people in our viewing area, if they may want to attend a culinary school, we are going to try to help them with the cost of that. Having said that, this is the first time we've had an Indian cuisine restaurant on the show. And I, I've got to tell you, I've never really had any experience chefing with Indian food. But with Chef Andy, uh, a wonderful person from uh, this great Indian restaurant, you know, I always talk about mise en place, which means everything in its place. So that when you start your cooking, you're not running around saying, gee, did I put this ingredient in or that ingredient? I looked at Andy, I said, what's all that? These are the ingredients he uses, and there are more ingredients that right, you use. Right. And I counted up to 32 different ingredients. So for the home chef, I would say that this may be intermediate level, because I can see he's added about 8 to 12 more items. So he's got 40 items probably here. Right. And we have is this typical of Indian cooking? Yes, this, this is the most important part of Indian cooking. Mm -hmm. We use more spices. Right. So on, on your spices and herbs, are these common to India or throughout the Middle East? or? Uh, most of the spices are common all over in the world. Yeah. But some of the spices like pomegranate seed, um, mm -hmm. cinnamon sticks, and black um, cumin seeds, they yeah. are, those are like uncommon spices. So I would say like in southern part of Asia, yeah. they mostly use those spices. Okay. Now, uh, I was talking to Andy prior to the show asking about the geography of India. For instance, ribs. Well, you know, if you come to this country up north, they may cook ribs different than they do Texas ribs, South Carolina ribs, or barbecue. So, you know, a lot of it has to do with where you're located in your country. Mm -hmm. But the, the cuisine is pretty much the same. Maybe right. different techniques, a few different spices, mm -hmm. but it's all the same. So, what amazes me is if I placed an order you're cooking everything to order pretty much, right? Right. It must be like a machine gun drill to get all these spices into your dish. <laughs> huh? I mean, it, it just blows my mind. So anyways, what are we cooking today, Chef? Um, today, I'm going to prepare two dishes. One vegetable samosa and other one would be uh, main dish. It's called karai chicken. Karai chicken is the combination of peppers and onion with tomato sauce. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Okay, why don't we get going. Mm. And uh, uh, if you want to talk about your herbs and spices, and give the description of what the, the product is, okay? Sure, it's my pleasure. Um, black pepper, pepper corn, straw anise seed, green cardamom, bay leaves, 
garlic powder, red chili powder, nutmeg, onion seed, green cardamom seed, pomegranate seed, black pepper powder, mustard seed, dry fenugreek, fenugreek leaves, fenugreek seed, a joint. It's this is like uncommon. Um, this one is uncommon spices. This yeah. is called weed of bishop or bishop's weed. Okay. Cinnamon stick, black cumin seed, black cardamom, ginger powder, cumin powder, red chili powder, coriander seed, meat masala, chili powder, coriander powder, cumin powder, salt turmeric powder and madras curry powder unbelievable um, how long did it take you to memorize all these names chef seriously i mean this is unbelievable well you're getting your pan heated do you use butter at all um no i'm not going to use okay. butter today we are Be using oil right you know when i was in culinary school we had a couple of days of indian cuisine and when you use butter, it's clarified, right. correct? Yeah. And for the viewing audience, that makes, it really just means melting the butter and skimming. You'll see that white fat come to the top and you take it off, correct? Right. right. Okay. All right. All right. Our pan is hit now. Let me put some oil in it. And are you using like a canola oil or? I'm using pure vegetable oil. Vegetable oil, right. okay. And that has a high smoke level so that it can take a lot more heat. Now, and once it's up to the temperature that you want, do you start putting all these spices and yeah. herbs in? Um, I'm going to put all the uh, whole spices because okay. all those spices have aromatic oil. Right. So you can see like we have like two different types of spices. One is whole and other one is uh, powdered. Yeah. They both work slightly differently. Okay. The powder has like it, it's it, during the processor all the aromatic oils have been already released but we have to release for the whole one. Yeah. So what we do is we'll heat the oil and throw some of the whole the holes. there. And, and then it will release uh, it will release the aromatic oil right. to the regular oil. Okay. Then we'll mix up with the ingredients. Right. And, and this technique is common in pretty much all cultures, okay? Uh, or Let me add cuisines, something. if you will, that you want to release those oils. And because you have some whole seeds versus the powder, obviously the whole seeds are going to take a little bit longer. Is that what we're talking about? Right, right. right. Okay. So I'm going to add some bay leaves, yep. uh, black cardamom, cinnamon, and star anise. Wow. Oh. You know, if I was living in India, I'd have to have three jobs just to pay for all these different herbs and spices. My God. How long do you sweat those for? Uh, roughly two to three minutes. Okay. Yeah, because you don't want it's, them it's to burn. Depend, depend on the heat, because yeah. we are using a Nixon, so my heat is 250, because we usually use like high power gas in the yeah. restaurant. Right. So we like... Right, okay. Yeah, and, and Chef just gave you something I always mention. In a professional kitchen, you're, you, you're cooking, you're moving fast, and with Chef Andy, he's moving at warp speed just to get all his ingredients in the pan. Do not be afraid of a hot pan. And I emphasize that if you're cooking meat dishes, you're getting caramelization or quick sweating, mm -hmm. releasing of the oils, the sugars. So keep that in mind. A hot pan is a good pan. Okay. So once you do the bay leaves, mm -hmm. then you're going to go to... I'm going to go with the whole uh, cumin. Okay. Now you put the star anise in there. Right. And... Um, I have cinnamon stick, star anise, yeah. black cardamom, okay. and bay leaves. Excellent. Now, and I just put some of the cumin powder there. Excellent. I'm, so we're drawing those oils, sugars, getting all those flavors working. Mm -hmm. um, what, one thing I want to say, and this would be confusing for me, there are so many ingredients that I have never used or have never combined together. Cooking culinary arts 
is an art form. You are the artist. So if you like a little bit more cumin, a little bit more cinnamon, use your own judgment and it will take, you know, it'll take a few times, but once you understand the different combinations and what flavors you like, do not be afraid to experiment. And if you're married, feed your husband. If he's still breathing at the end of the meal, you're okay. Okay, Chef, what did you just uh, use your rolling pin to crush? Um, I use coriander seed. Okay. I just roll it and throw it in the mixture. It, so that it's, it's got a very hard shell. Yes, the hard shell, that's why I crack it up. Yeah. yeah. Help release those oils. Okay, so. All right, so next ingredients, I'm gonna add some Spanish on in there. Uh huh. Oh, you put about four tablespoons. Four tablespoons. I yeah. want half cup. Right. So we'll caramelize the onion, then we'll add some garlic ginger, chopped oh. garlic ginger. Now, do you mix your uh, chopped garlic and Chopped ginger, right. You mix those together. Yes, I have mixed chopped garlic and ginger right. together. That's yeah. a very common uh, technique in Asian cooking as well. Yeah. Chinese cooking, uh, Thai cooking, where you mix the garlic and ginger. Right. And I, I've been doing that. You it can, works great. Right. You can, you can puree garlic and ginger together too. Yeah. But if you chop it up, when you bite the food, then yeah. you'll get the t texture of Garlic and right. ginger too. Yeah. And Chef just gave you a tip here. You know, as opposed to pureeing, you know, part of your eating experience has to do with presentation and I always use the term the bite. In other words, when that food is in your mouth, you're gonna if if you do a, a fine dice with your ginger and garlic, you the bite you'll have a little bit of texture. And that actually adds to the dish. Right you know, your, your eating experience. Okay, so we're caramelizing onions, and then what do you do? Do you put the, uh, what's uh, next ingredient, the ginger? Our ne ne next ingredients would be ginger and garlic, chopped ginger, chopped garlic. Wow. So we'll use one, one teaspoon of it. Okay. I've got to tell you, with, even though he hasn't even put a dent in all these herbs and spices, the aromas are just fantastic, yeah. and uh, I ask fun. every chef, we talk about smell-o-vision. Right. If you come up with an idea so that the viewing audience can smell these things, cut us in. You're right. Uh, you know, the, the Spanish do a, uh, a, a combination of peppers, onions, uh, cilantro, and they cook it down into almost a paste, and they, they call that sofrito. Sofrito, right. Right, mm -hmm. so all these herbs and spices and the onion and the ginger garlic, is that something that you use in all your dishes? Well, we have one chutney. Uh, this is mint chutney. Okay. This is pretty similar to sofrito. Okay. To make sofrito, they use parsley, but right. we use uh, mint chutney. I mean mint, mint for the mint, but like, Okay. The process is the same. The same. Yeah. So, so we have so many dishes yeah. where we use lots of spices. You know, there's some really uh, hearty herbs in there, but there's such a flowery aroma coming as well. All right. So next ingredient, I'm going to add some turmeric powder here. Yeah. One by four tablespoon. Okay. So in, in this cuisine, as you're getting the foundation put together, you're really taking the time mm -hmm. to release all these oils and sugars. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, you're not just putting in 10 different herbs. You're each one, you're working one at a time, I guess. Right, I'm right, saying. right. Now, what is that? So I'm going to add some fresh green peas. Okay. And what is that going to do to your dish? Um, Sugar, sweetness? Yeah, it, it has some kind of sweetness. Yeah. And later on, I'm going to add some chili powder, so there will be like um, some sort of sweet and little yeah. spicy. Right, so you're balancing, balancing the, the flavor, the, flavors, right. the heat right. with the sugar, okay. Now I'm going to add chopped potatoes. Potatoes? Right. Wow. 
Now, are they pack cooked or blanched? They, they are. They are cooked. They are cooked. right boiled boiled potatoes. Okay. So, it, are potatoes common cuisine in India or? Yeah, this is common cuisine. In India. Okay. Wow. Salt. Salt. Okay. Do you use kosher salt? Yeah, we we use normal salt, not kosher one. You use Gamma. table salt. Table salt. Right. Wow, that's unusual. Chili powder. Wow. Just a little bit. Yeah. Now I know, in talking to different people I've met that are from India, mm -hmm. the Hindus do not eat meat. Is that correct? Right. So right. they're strictly vegetarian meals. Yes. Well. Um, there are some Hindus, they eat meat too. Right. Yeah. But like those people um, who believe in religious, they don't yeah. eat, they don't even touch the meat. Right. Okay. You mean they won't even touch it? Touch it, Never right. mind. They won't even touch okay. it, right. Good. All right. All right. Like now. Our mixer is done, so I'll keep it aside, let it cool. Okay. Next thing, I'm yeah. going to make some dough. Oh. All right. So one dough. cup of regular flour. All right. So that's that's, that's just your regular, regular flour. Regular flour. Right. Okay. And what is one by fourth cup of chickpea flour. Chickpea flour. Chickpea flour. Okay. Right. That's interesting. Right. Um, I'm gonna add some ajoin seed. What kind of seed is it? Ajoin. You can um, carm. You can cut cut carom seed. Carom. Uh, yes, this is uncommon seed. Okay. It's hard to find in, but you can get it in Indian store. Yeah. Some salt. Okay. A little bit of oil. Uh huh. And water. Right. Now these recipes you can go on to the Chef's Table Series TV website. The recipe will be there, and actually, you can rewatch the show. So you can take your laptop, you can take whatever you want to cook along with the chef and have the recipe right there. But again, with all these ingredients, have your mise en place. Okay, I have uh, this dough ready, yeah. and I already made one. This is a pre-made dough. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it. All right. Chef, let me ask you a question sure, about sure, this sure. dough. There, there, there is no yeast, there's no baking powder, no baking soda. Right, there's okay. no... Okay, so it's, it's sort of a flatbread type dough. Right, you're right. And I'm guessing, and as I feel it, it's a very tight dough. Tight dough, you're right. Okay, excellent. Let me move this over, over here, if that's Thank okay. You. I'll move it back afterwards. All right. Let me get some flour in there. Yeah. And what are we going to do with the dough? Uh, we're going to make the pastry. Okay. Now, when you say a pastry, do you dock this or uh, use a docker? No, or? we don't use docker. Okay. F just for your own information, a docker is used in making like a puff pastry. Puff pastry. Uh, and it, it's a rolling pin, but it has like needles. And what you do is you dock the dough. And that stops the dough from blowing up. Okay, it lets out the gas, and the in the once the dough heats up. So we'll make it like two pieces. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm gonna make the samosas. Wow. So we'll use some water on right. the edges. Yeah. Right. We'll make a cone. Oh, right. geez, great. And then I'm gonna put these fillings here. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like making a Peking ravioli right, or, right. or an Italian ravioli. Oh, some Similar effect. Right. Oh, you notice right. the chef just put water on the outside. That will act as a glue or a binder to right. hold the filling in place. Mm -hmm. Hey, we have samosas ready here. Right. Now, is that a traditional shape? Right. That's the traditional triangular shape samosas. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you want to put an adequate filling in, but you don't want to overfill it oh, because once you try to seal it, 
it's going to be maybe breaking the dough open. And when you, I'm guessing you saute these with the, in oil yes. or fry We're them. We're going to fry them in the oil now. Right. It's, oil oh. is ready. Oh, already. that's oil. Okay, yes. great. Wow. So what temperature it do you have this at? 325 for like four or five minutes roughly. Right, until it floats, does it float? Yeah, it's gonna float it up, that's when that, that's done. Okay. And when dough is cooked, it's gonna come out, float. Right, and it's, I'm guessing it's, when it's golden brown, you know that it's pretty much cooked, right? Right, right, you're because right. Because your, your, your ingredients or your filling has all been cooked. Yes. So you're really just cooking the dough and by cooking the dough, it's going to give it a little bit more flavor. Right. And what was this powder that you put in again? Was that chickpea? Uh, chickpea, powder? chickpea flour. Flour. Okay. Right. Chickpea flour, regular flour. Yeah. So basically, samosas do it combination of chickpea flour, regular flour, salt, and this a joint caram seed. Okay. Very good. Okay. You know, I was an artisan bread baker for a while. And that's the only baking I enjoyed doing, was making real old world breads, old world technique. And bread basically is flour, water. If you don't have the salt, believe me, it's a very mundane tasting product. So salt is great, in my opinion, in everything. It's a, it's a wonderful flavor enhancer. People used to say to me, how about Tuscan bread? Well, historically, in Tuscany, they don't put salt in bread. So, it, and I have a friend that just was on a honeymoon, and I called her. I thought she was home, but she was in Tuscany. And I said, well, how's it going? She said, oh, it's wonderful, but the bread is like eating cardboard. There's no salt in it. So don't be afraid to put a pinch of salt in, in, your, in your bread dough. Now these are starting to float, yeah, they are so starting to float. I'm guessing we're just going to let it get some color. Yeah, I'm oh. just waiting for a little bit more color. Right. And let me ask you, Chef, what, sure. what is the next thing we're going to be cooking besides, well, these are cooking, maybe we can get into the next dish. Could we yeah, do that? Yeah, next dish we are preparing uh, for chicken kadai. Kadai. Chicken kadai, so. Okay. Uh, this dish is done, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. You're putting them on here, Chef? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wonderful. Now, if you try these at home and you put them on a plate, I recommend you put a paper towel there mm -hmm. and let that oil, excess oil drain, drain off. And right. I'm sure yeah, Chef right. does that, right? Yes, we do that. Yes. But these look wonderful, don't they? Right. Oh, my goodness. Italy. You can serve this dish with uh, main chutney. Some and of the mint chutneys. Oh, wow. And we have tamarind chutney. It's a sweet and sour chutneys. Oh. Now, see, I've never tried this dish. Yes, so this dish is ready. Oh, that looks wonderful. So we'll move on to another dish now. Yeah, excellent. Now we're back with the second mise en place for the next dish. And Chef, why don't you tell the viewing audience what this dish is. Yeah, this dish is, uh, we call it chicken kadai, or you can get it like uh, paneer. Paneer is a cottage cheese. So kadai is basically um, chicken or any other dishes cooked with peppers, onion, and tomato-based sauce. Oh. And it has so many different types of whole spices. So I'm gonna show you how to make this. Great. I'll add some vegetable yeah. oil here. Okay. Well, I, I learned something. When I, we first started with the show, I was looking at all your mise en place, and I thought you were going to use every one of these ingredients for that first dish. Mm -hmm. But what you've done is exactly what we're trying to teach you. Have all your ingredients in place, all right? You may not use them all on the first dish, but you may be using some of them for the second dish. Second dish right and this here. way here, you don't leave anything out and compromise the finished product. You're right. Okay. So I'm gonna add whole spices. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon. Yeah. Black cardamom, green cardamom, bay lips. Wow. Some of dry chili, mm. nutmeg. Yeah. Black pepper curd. Now those chilies, this is gonna be a hot spicy dish. Right? Um, yes, it is, but this dry one is, it's okay, but the regular chili is very spicy. Yeah. Powder one is spicier than the 
Okay. Cumin and yeah. coriander seed. Wow. As you were adding, you know, some of the, uh, the larger, like the chili, obviously, mm -hmm. but some of these other spices you were taking pinches of. Is right, that correct? Right, right. right. They, okay. were, they were cumin, coriander powder, cor coriander seed, cumin seed, mm -hmm. and fenugreek. Wow. This is really an art form. I mean, to understand putting all these ingredients together and best uses, it, it, this takes time to learn. Right, right, you're right. So who taught you this? You know, your family uh, growing up? Or? Well, I went to culinary art school in Nepal. Oh. And then I learned it from there. Now I'm gonna add some Spanish onion, like one cup of onions. Right. Now, are you just getting the, these translucent, or are you going to caramelize these? I'm going to caramelize it. Okay. And again, when you do caramelization, you're building sugars, and, and you're getting that golden color, which is going to add its own, right. you know, flavor profile. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I always talk about cooking a great meal is layering your food as you're cooking. This is more than layering. And it's just fabulous. Yeah. Now, in your restaurant, do you make naan? Yes, we make fresh uh, naan in the restaurant. Yeah. Yes. Now, those naan uh, ovens, uh, do you put the naan on the side wall? Is yeah. that how that now, works? The nan oven is called tandoor. It's like a clay oven. Yeah. It has clay all around the right. tube. Yeah. So we'll stick the bread dough there and cook wow. it. Well, it's kind of a tricky job. Yeah. But yeah, because if you don't yeah. watch, make sure that the dough covers your hand. You're gonna lose, uh, burn yes. off your fingertips. Tandoor safe, like they like burn all the time. Their yeah. hands like it's right. tricky. Yeah, and that's part of a baker's curse. Right. And, you know, right. I, I I own the fairly good sized bakery at one time and you know you look at your bakers they always have these like red marks on their right. forearms from sticking their hands in the ovens and yes. okay so what what do we do next now we'll add garlic ginger paste oh we made like a fresh garlic and ginger. It's like a three part of ginger and one part of garlic. Okay. So we grind it t together, together with some okay. little bit of oil and water. Okay. And this is using the ginger and garlic a little bit differently than the first recipe. Right. Because that was a fine dice. Right. This you made a paste out of it? Mm -hmm. Why right. is there a paste versus just a fine dice? Um, we are going to make sauce. Oh. out of these ingredients. Okay. So that's the reason that I'm trying to skip uh, ginger garlic dice. Right. Because it takes a little longer time to cook. Right. Onion cooks really fast. Then yeah. Ginger garlic, it's not going to cook that um, quickly. quickly. And so it also, reason. it'll melt into your sauce to so your you're sauce, not sorry. getting big gloss. Okay. Great. So our onion is getting car caramelized. I'm going to add uh, one teaspoon of uh, garlic in the paste. Wow. Now you say you add a little bit of water in there. When you make your paste, do you mm. fine dice it, put a little salt on it, and then put your knife and pull it back to make a paste? Um, or do you no, do we, that in the food have, process? We have a processor, so we yeah. just throw the, all right. the ingredients together. You're probably making a big right, batch right, of it. Make, right. We okay. make like a boxes of ginger yeah. every once yeah. in a week. So wow. We use a lot. Yeah. This is terrific. You know, anytime you add ginger to a dish and a little bit of garlic, it, it just, the, the I'm aromas add are some, fantastic. Um, cumin powder. Yeah. Coriander powder. Mm -hmm. Turmeric. Mm -hmm. Meat masala. We use this for the meat items. It has some of the curry powder ground cardamom cumin. Okay, so that's so a it blend. it gives like, yeah, good flavor, right? Okay. So if you shop in, a, in an Indian 
market, for instance, mm -hmm. okay, can you buy these ingredients by the ounce, or do you have to buy the package oh, bottle? You, you, or? you can get it by ounces, yeah. as well as packet too. Right. So I'm going to add some tomatoes. Yeah. And I notice these are a fine dice, pretty much. Right, Small right, dice. fine dice. Yeah. We'll cook it for like three, four minutes. Yeah. It takes a little longer to cook tomatoes. Yeah. Just until it melts down a little bit, mm -hmm. releases its juices. Right. Okay, great. Now, what are the other ingredients that go into this dish? Um, Obviously, chicken. Yes, peppers and chicken. We'll cook chicken when, like, chicken is like, I'd say seventy-five percent is done. Then we'll add peppers. Okay. Then it'll balance the cook. Okay. Right. And you know, these are these are huge chunks of chicken. They're cubed. So I'm guessing they will cook fairly quickly. Right. right. But like ch any chicken, you want to be sure it's cooked all the way through. Right. So I'm going to add some tomato puree. Okay. Salt. Yeah. And some water. Oh. I always like to keep water handy. Yeah. Because there's high chances to get my spices get burned. And yeah. Yeah. You get, you're gonna get, you're gonna lose the flavor Flip, out right, of it. So. Right. Right. Chef just gave you a great tip. He said that he keeps water close by, particularly when you're using some expensive herbs and spices, or for that matter, any spice or herb. You just add a little bit of water to bring that temperature down and stop right. it from burning because it'll ruin your dish. Yeah. Now I'm gonna add chicken. Okay. Mm. Oh, this dish looks great. Great. Now, I noticed that's parsley you have there, right? That's oh, cilantro. cilantro. Right. So do you actually cook the cilantro a little bit, or do you just dress the plate with we it? We garnish the cilantro Yeah. At the last moment. Okay, good. Cilantro is, is just a great uh, leafy product. It, it has right. wonderful flavor. Now, it is cilantro is. common in Indian cooking? Yes, because cilantro is yeah, most it, yeah, common in Indian cuisine. Wow. And it's a really popular um, garnish, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah, well, it's very popular Popper, in, in right. Spanish cooking as well. Yes. I always use the supermarket is a great way to think about about this about this idea. You're right. You go to a supermarket today, you see food products that are ingredients that you use in cuisines from all over the world. Yes. You would never see that, mm -hmm. okay? But now, because of the American palate, I believe, has become far more sophisticated. You know, and, and if you're cooking some dishes, some of these herbs and spices, it doesn't have to be an Indian dish. You know, once you get used to them, they are great ingredients to add to some of your favorite dishes. You're right. Well, the I think that there is a reason like uh, why Indian food is getting popular nowadays. Uh, first thing is because of the health benefit. All right. the spices have uh, so many health benefits. Oh, okay, good. So that's the reason that our Indian food is getting popular day right. by day. Right. Right. People wow. are more concerned about their the health, health now right, than right. ever. Yeah. That's, that's a great point. You know, there are a lot of health benefits. I'm going to add some onions. Okay. Now that's a large, that's a chopped onion he's putting it's in. Diced, yeah, and papers. Yeah. Wow. This is really terrific, Chef. Thank you. So how long is the culinary school in Nepal? How long do you uh, have to go? I, I, I had to go for three years. Three years, yes. okay. So do you get like a, an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree? Yeah, I, I get a bachelor's degree. Good. Then yeah. I moved to U.S. and started working in restaurant. Yeah. yeah. In Nepal or did you come here? 
Uh, I came here. Wow, great. So you've been here for how long? For on and off 11 years. Wow. Yes. It's always nice having somebody from another country, especially a talented chef and a very good looking chef, I might add. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so I'm gonna add some more water here. Okay. Just add a little bit more water. We're loosening up that dish. Mm -hmm. All those ingredients. We're letting the peppers cook mm -hmm. and the chicken. We want that to cook through. Right. Now, is rice very common in the Indian cuisine? Yes, rice is very common in India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, uh -huh. Nepal. Yeah. Yes. And what yes. type of rice do they use? A brown rice, uh, a basmati mostly rice? Mostly we use basmati rice. Yeah. Long grain rice. Right, yeah. Now, let me ask you, what would be a typical beverage sitting in, a, in an Indian restaurant back in Nepal or India? Is it a tea or? First of all, tea, yes. Tea, yeah. Because uh, like we greet our guest with cup of tea, hot cup of tea. Okay. Uh, masala tea. Uh huh. We add lo lots of those spices. Oh, you do. Yes, yes. Like oh, wow. uh, cinnamon, black cardamom, oh, green nice. cardamom, yeah. bay leaves, that, yeah. and ginger. And ginger. They are right. the main ingredients for masala tea. Masala tea. Yeah, we uh, mix it up with uh, tea leaves. Wow. And milk. The milk. Yes. So is that like a chai? Yeah, that's chai is uh, well, that's like chai. Yeah. Chai. You're right. Yeah. All right, our dish is almost done. Great. So I'm gonna finish up with some cilantro. Cilantro. Oh, lovely. Just now, adding a it, great it adds another color. Good, good color. Yeah. Right. All right, we're done. Excellent. So I'm gonna plate it. Okay, very good. I have white rice here. Oh, sweet. In the bowl. Yeah. Oh, I love what you did. Okay. You put the peas in the bottom. Right, right. That is very nice. Mm. The aromas are wonderful. So do you so work gonna, seven days a week? I work um, six days in a now, week. Now, are you week. off on Sundays? Mm, well, I have off uh, on weekdays. Weekdays, yeah. I work in um, hospitality hotel lines, so oh, yeah. weekday, weekends are pretty busier than right. the weekdays. Well, if I invited you over for Sunday dinner, would you bring all these ingredients and cook for us? Sure, why not? Oh, I'll great. definitely cook for you. All right, thank you. All right, fabulous. And this is, you know, you've got your chicken, you've got some vegetables in there, you've got vegetables. Samosas. And your samosas, mm -hmm. you've got some, you know, some carbs there with your rice and right. sweet peas. Mm -hmm. And the presentation, I love the way that you put the peas in the bottom of the cup and they're sitting right there. Thank you very much. Yeah, it, you know, we can't bring a tandoori oven here to show you how to cook it and I told people on the show, I, I have very low vision, and I wouldn't want to be the guy sticking that dough in the oven because I know what I do. I burn myself, but this is a great meal. Now, do you serve a salad? Is that common in Indian food? Yes, um, we, still, we, we have some salad on the menu. Rather than salad, we have like cold appetizer. They, we call it chart. So it's pretty much like salad. Yeah. So we sell it a lot. Great. This has been a wonderful presentation. And I'll tell you, if you've never enjoyed Indian food, look at the mise en place. It looks like a painting. There are so many different colors, textures, and aromas. It, it's fantastic. So we're really pleased. This is the first time we've had an Indian chef on and preparing this wonderful cuisine. So again, thank you, Chef. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, it's thanks, wonderful. Thanks for giving us yeah. chance to, to oh. giving me chance to um, show some of my skills. Oh, thank you very much. Absolutely. And again, folks, if you want to try these recipes, you can go to the Chef's Table Series TV website, and you can get the recipes 
watch the show and cook along with the chef so that you're following technique and method and just pay attention to different, every chef has a little bit different technique of doing things and you can learn from the professionals and it's been fantastic. I'm, I'm really taken back by just all these ingredients so it's been a, a pleasure for me. And remember, the show was produced by the Chef's Table Foundation, and we would love to thank this. We're shooting this show in the Sons of Italy Lodge in Roslindale, and they've been very good and gracious to us to allow us to come in here. So we are grateful. It's a lovely facility. And thank you again. We'll thank see you. you next time. Thank you very much. Hi everyone and welcome to the Wine Pairing of the Week. My name is Carol O'Connor, co-host of the Chef's Table Series TV show. I am here with John Paul Kaminga. He is a wine sommelier and wine manager of Blanchard's in Jamaica Plain. So John Paul, as you saw with the chef, he yeah. had so many spices on the table. And he made, first he made the vegetable samosa and then he made the chicken kadai. Yep. So I gave you the task of finding one wine that would go with that dish that had so many spices. So which one did you choose today? We chose a Vouvray. Um, and uh, Vouvray is usually a little bit sweet, although you can find them from bone dry to dessert sweet, syrupy mm -hmm. and dessert sweet. This is very much in the just slightly sweet category. Um, what country is it from? France. France, So okay. Vouvray is France. one of the classic regions of uh, France. It's probably the best known region in the world for um, a grape called Chenin Blanc. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, yep. we had that. Yep. I think, so yeah. Chenin Blanc you'll find all over the world, but mm -hmm. the Loire Valley and the Central Loire in, in, in particular is uh, the homeland, and Vouvray is probably the most uh, famous region um, there for this grape. Uh, but like I said, it's a little sweet. It's mm -hmm. definitely, you know, it's got it's kind of soft um, in texture. You know, it's not too acidic. Um, there's lots of fruit. I thought that bit of sweetness might. Um, ameliorate all those complicated yep. spicy flavors that yeah. are in the chicken dish. So yeah. And it's a, oh, it's a white wine. Yep. So, usually I'm good with vocabulary words, but you said the word ameliorate? Uh, yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> I didn't have well, that in Latin school. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was thinking, how would this wine make friends with the food? And that oh, bit of sweetness so that, uh, you know, it's kind of lower in alcohol. Yeah. So the, the two things, the lower alcohol, the bit of sweetness, um, since it's a white wine, the lack of tannins, um, those mm -hmm. three things, I figured, are going to make it really easy going with this dish. We'll have to try it together. Yeah, I love, love the color. Although it's not really old, I think mm -hmm. it is one of the older wines we've tried together. It's a 2011, mm -hmm. um, and it's showing a little bit of age. You, you, know, you notice the color is kind of golden, and if it had been younger, right. it would have been a little lighter in color. Oh, that's good to um, know. Yeah. I didn't know that. So the older a wine is, it yeah. gets a little bit more goldy. Well, um, white wines get darker. They get okay. from like light color to kind of golden and then brown mm -hmm. eventually. Um, and uh, red wines uh, get lighter. So they can start off deep purple and then they become maybe reddish and brick colored. And eventually they end up the same color as a really old uh, white wine. So white wines and red wines will both end up being brown eventually. Um, but it'll take a while. Basically. Yeah, wow, yeah. That's, a, that's interesting. Okay, let's taste. Mm. Oh, John Paul. It's really good. That's tasty. <laughs> I really like this wine. Um, it's, it's classic Chenin Blanc. There's acidity, mm -hmm. there's sweetness, there's that spiciness, a little honeyed kind of flavor. Um, I feel like this wine would cool down those spices, I think. What that's do you think? what I'm hoping, that bit of honeyed yeah. flavor and uh, I don't know, the kind of freshness to it, mm -hmm. the low alcohol, should all work well to, yeah. uh, to go with the dish. Well, John Paul, I like this one, and I think a lot of the um, attendees to the event loved it as well. So, yeah, cool. you did a great job. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, everyone, so this has been this week's wine pairing for Shanti's vegetable samosa and chicken kadai. So, we will see you next week for next week's wine pairing. Hi folks, Steve LeCount, chef owner of Chiara Bistro in Westwood, coming at you with this week's chef's tip. Uh, this week I just want to talk about an easy way to get pomegranate seeds 
out of the pomegranate. Um, I remember when we were kids and we used to call these Chinese apples and you know we used to quarter them like that and then we sat around the table and I think maybe my parents did it on purpose to keep us out of trouble and keep us occupied for a while and we would just take teaspoons and try to pick out through all this membrane that's completely throughout uh, a pomegranate. Uh, I love pomegranates, uh, great uh, winter use. Uh, you'll see them around all the time. Uh, they make beautiful holiday decorations. Uh, but um, they are naturally loaded with antioxidants. It's one of the healthiest fruits you can eat. But they have a nice tartness to them and a nice crunch to them too. And I like to contrast in things uh, like salads with goat cheese where you have a soft goat cheese. Uh, you you uh, have a nice contrast to that with the, the crunch from the, uh, and the tartness of uh, the pomegranate. We also tend to use it a lot on duck dishes or chicken dishes with maybe a sweet glaze, something with like honey and molasses or maple. Um, you've got all that sugar going on on that, so you want something tart to slice through that and balance out that dish. So pomegranate seeds uh, seem to be perfect for that. Uh, but anyway, back to the original point. How do I get all those seeds out of there without spending half my life doing so? I just cut, cut it in half um, horizontally. Put your hand over a bowl, and just like the kid you wanted to keep occupied for hours getting those seeds out, give it a good spanking with it, with a, a heavy kitchen spoon. And you'll see mostly just seeds come out of there. And to get the rest, just keep, keep banging on it with that spoon, and they will come out like that, and you'll have a bowl full of these before you know it. Steve LeCount. Chef Ono Chiara Bistro, and that's this week's Chef's Tip. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Chef's Table Series. My name is Carol O'Connor, and I am here with Rokia. She is one of the owners of Shanti, A Taste of India. And I'm going to be interviewing her and ask her more about the restaurant as well as the cuisine here. So, Rokia, thanks for being on the show with me mm, today. Thank you. So, Rokia, tell me how long Shanti has been here. Uh, at our Rosinda location, yep. it's about a year and a half a now. A year and a half, wow. Now, um, you also have two other restaurants? Yes. So, our Dorchester Shanti location, which is the original, uh, is coming up to be like 15 years. 15? Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> that's a, that's a, uh, a lifetime, which is no. great. That's awesome. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it's been that long. Right. But and then you have another one in Cambridge? Yes, we have um, another restaurant called Moxa Restaurant. Mm -hmm. And that's not Indian cuisine, that's Pan-Asian tapas. Oh, interesting. Well, mm -hmm. we're going to have to go visit the um, your Cambridge location um, in a couple of months. Oh, so sure. you've been here for a year and a half. And um, tell me more about Indian cuisine for a lot of our viewers who have never tried it before. I mean, one of the things that you can like, if you want to describe in one word, is yeah. like spices. Spices. <laughs> Um, Indian cuisine is full of all these aromatic spices mm -hmm. um, that not only like enhance the flavor of your food, yeah. but then it's also like, you know, beneficial to your health as well. Mm -hmm. um, even one of the staples is turmeric, mm -hmm. which we use in like most, most curries and most cuisine. But that one is like, you know, they found, studies have found like that's good for like Alzheimer, inflammation, oh, really? and things like that. So um, there's most of the spices mm -hmm. usually have like a health benefit. Wow. Now, if someone's new to Indian cuisine, like, and they came up to you or one of your staff, and they were like, you know, I'm new, what should I try that wouldn't be overwhelming to me? Um, one of the, like, you say, like, kind of like entry ways to start off yeah. with um, one of our famous dishes, like chicken tikka masala, yeah. which is like, you know, you're not overwhelmed with like the heat mm -hmm. spice, but it's a gentle way to like t taste right. all the different spices, but not the chili spice. Right. And I find you know. that when um, I've gone to like Indian cooking demos, that's a dish that they have. Or if you go taste yes. of events, because mm -hmm. like you said, everyone who's new to it yeah. or who loves Indian food will always gravitate yeah. towards that dish. That That's actually a dish that was an intro, kind of like originated through the introduction when oh, no English was in, in India. Mm -hmm. 
So that's how it kind of like originated as well wow. as an introduction. Now, um, what other dishes, um, now for those people who have been eating Indian food for a while and they come here for dinner and they want to try something different, what do you suggest? Um, we have like a variety of different meats dishes, mm -hmm. but if you want to venture out, like there's a um, patia dish that we make. Yeah. It's, it's a blend of um, fresh mango sauce with, and ging ginger, which is a really nice balance. Oh, and nice. then also like a puna dish, yeah. which is like a method of cooking. So you oh, can make it with that. all kinds of meats and vegetables, but mm -hmm. you kind of cook it where you simmer it in its own steam and so you're oh, not wow. adding additional um, liquid to the dish. So it kind of like enhances the flavor because like keeps the spice, aromas and stuff right. inside. Exactly. Oh, well, that's really, mm -hmm. that's amazing. That's awesome. Now, you're also involved with the community as well. I've, I've known that. You've been yes. involved with Taste of Rosendale, mm -hmm. with the Rosendale Village Main Street. But you've yes. also done events here, like uh, small cook cooking classes? Yes, so we've been hosting a number of like spice classes. So it's kind of like an introduction. Um, of these spices and our chef um, Andy yep. who we usually like you know introduce like let's say five spices mm -hmm. at a time we introduce it and then like we'll like let you smell it taste it and then like he will like do a cooking demo with it mm -hmm. you'll see how to use it right. and then you'll get to taste it oh that's you perfect know? well when we had him um, doing the cooking segment with Jill I couldn't believe the number of spices yeah, he had yeah. going. So there's a lot of really healthy um, spices that Indian cuisine mm -hmm. has that benefits all, yes. which I think is great. Well, Rokia, thank you so much for being on the restaurant interview segment with me. I appreciate hey, thank it. Thank you for having me. So everyone, I'm Carol O'Connor with Rokia and Rosalind Dale at Shanti, A Taste of India. And this has been the restaurant interview segment of the Chef's Table series. So we'll see you next week. Great. And then I'm gonna put this fillings here. It's almost like making a Peking ravioli right. or, or an Italian ravioli. No. Similar effect. Right. Notice the chef just put water on the outside. That will act as a glue or a binder to right. hold the filling in place. Now is that a traditional shape? Right, that's the traditional triangular shape.